Okay. So, uh, first and foremost, I was just having to be in the neighborhood and I thought I'd go ahead and fight Baron Du Bouchon de Semieri. Uh, I'm the Dufermage guy. I don't really know how to say his name, pronounce it. I'm pretty sure, like, I, I literally have seen one person pronounce this as another YouTuber, and he managed to, like, flawlessly roll the name right off the tongue, and it was amazingly sounding. Uh, I've since then tried to figure out how to say it, and uh, I couldn't do it, so, yeah. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, that's right, the audio bugged out, so here's from Boy's commentary. Maybe some problem music in the background, I don't really know. Uh, so one thing about Baron, uh, Baron, the, the wine taster, just, just call him Omni du Fromage guy. I call him Jump Man because literally that's all he is doing. Kind of looks like, what do you call it? I don't know, for whatever reason I kept getting the impression of like Donkey Kong barrel throwing and like Old Man, or uh, not Old Man, uh, Jump Man from what, Donkey Kong, you know, with, from the, the arcade game. Uh, that jump man is just something I've seen recently. Anyway, uh, there's no real reason to actually go and fight this guy as early as you possibly can, um, especially since prisons can easily be accessed as early as uh, Act One if you build up a good enough team composition to um, go and kill Vincent the Frostbringer. I I'd say you build up a team composition. You can literally just go and grab some high end mobs, build up a what do you call it? Uh, a small servant army, gear them up to like level 34 gear, and they will totally destroy uh, Vincent for you. And since prisons, all you gotta do is just tap them once to complete a quest objective, which is to get the prison floorings, which is no longer a T3 um, tech. Uh, I think that's actually a amazingly big good change. That, that shift up is the, or not shift up, fuck shift up. Uh, Stalock Studios have done some pretty good things with this uh, update. They definitely have taken uh, two steps forward, one step back, and, uh, they, they, you know, it's not, not perfect, but it's still pretty good, no doubt in my mind. Um, and other things, too, Blood Marlowe is really only needed for, like, um, what do you call it, uh, amulets later on, but... Um, yeah, I wouldn't say Blood Marlowe is a priority to get. I mean, the damage reduction and the misery uh, is, is pretty nice. Uh, the main problem is that uh, you have fish. And literally every fish in the game that's not the fish, but fish that can be bought, can actually be used to make prisons uh, or prisoners uh, maintain misery and health for the prisoners really, 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 really super easily. So I'm kind of wondering what's the point of even having rats by this point other than to make garlic potions and you don't really need that anymore. Um, this fight's relatively easy. All you got to do is just, you know, get some water blood, uh, anything that can help your physical uh, damage. I haven't actually fought this guy three levels below if I'm being 100% honest. Um, but I do probably would recommend getting some warrior blood. I would like to actually fight this guy three levels below. I just, again, I've never done so because I've always beeline for this guy. Um, here I'm doing an unholy approach. And it wasn't started out as an unholy approach. It was supposed to be illusion, unholy, static, and I want to say uh, blood. And then I just wound up going through the entirety of the character with just... Uh, um, Unholy plus the uh, illusion veil, and it was like, man, that's actually a really good veil. Um, not really. Uh, well, it is, but it isn't. And the only reason why I say it is is mostly because of the phantasm that you get built up, which helps reduce the amount of cooldown from your spells. So, in a way, this works out fairly well. Uh, unholy is just uh, really, really super good, so there's that. Uh, one thing to take note uh, here is that uh, he can easily destroy your skeletons, so be wary of that. Uh, I don't think I've actually fought this guy that um, wasn't use of pistols. So I'd like to try it again with a little bit of melee approach. But Unholy is just extremely fucking good. I'm starting to remember back then during early access, my skill setup was Unholy for sure. Ward of the Dam plus Purgatory. Uh, Purgatory no longer exists, so. That's kind of sad, but it's, it's uh, in the form of a new skill. So, uh, yeah, Unholy actually made this a lot more easier because of Condemned. Condemned makes it to where you can make the enemies take more damage. Um, none of the weapons that I'm displaying here show anything or it was used, so there's that. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, if you have some warrior blood, go for it, totally. I, I've tried this out with some um, scholar blood. It wasn't working too well for me, especially since uh, spells were just taking too long to cool down and get used. Um, I don't know too much about what Brutal Difficulty brings in this, other than probably an additional wave of barrels. And I believe the barrels are probably a little bit much more thicker, more hardier to break. But other than that, this this ability is, or this uh, this boss fight with Unholy is totally doable. So um, yeah, if you're looking to to, to beat the Baron at uh, ten levels lower with Unholy, totally go for it. It's it's a totally viable strategy. Yeah. <laughs>